Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode with Reinstein. Well, I had an objective set for me by a young lady, I believe, called Afraid Anna, who said, go to Jewel, build it, you know, put a satellite around Jewel. And we haven't actually got one there yet, I don't think. Um, so here's the rocket that I've built that's going to get me there, I think. It's got a Delta V of 12,489. And for the first time in any of my rockets, I've decided to use the atomic rocket motor. And the good thing is, uh, I discovered through your help and a bit of trial and error that if I use regular liquid fuel, then the atomic engine is not as efficient as if you just used the regular liquid fuel, you know, which you would normally use in a jet plane. So I've now incorporated that. Now let's just take a little look at the probe. So if I detach that a second. The little probe I'm using has got a Delta V of 2,886. It's got two Mr. Goo containers. It's got some electricity generating photovoltaic panels, some batteries, a little uh, communitron, uh, what do you call it, antenna, a thermometer, and a barometer. Now, if I quickly go through my science stuff, it's pretty much all I can take, unless I land, in which case I would take the surface scanning module and the atmospheric fluid spectrovariometer, which um, you, can't, you can't use unless you're in an atmosphere. Aside from that, if I put a Science Junior on top, look what it does to the Delta V. It drastically reduces it. So I'm not gonna go with that for now. This is what I'm gonna go with. And that should enable me to go around different biomes and uh, get various amounts of uh, various amounts of scientific data from Jewel. So without further ado, let's launch it. Oh no. Wait, before we do that, I wanted to attach some winglets to it. Now, I kind of like these winglets. They're kind of cool. So I want to stick some of those on the outside. And I'm also going to try and attempt a proper gravity burn, which I know um, Omar would be particularly happy with. So let's get to it. All right, time to turn on SAS, kick up the thruster, and away we go. I believe I've got all the staging set. Now, the good thing is this rocket is really, really quite short compared to some of my earlier builds. And um, I can actually just turn the thruster way down in order to conserve fuel. Because if you take a look on the right hand side down here, I've got my flight engineer. And by looking at that, you can see the Delta V total is actually climbing by me not wasting so much fuel in this takeoff, uh, in the early phases of takeoff, I'm actually gaining loads of Delta V which can only be a good thing so I'm gonna to continue to burn slowly up to I think around 15,000 meters is kind of good for this rocket and then start to turn right um, Omar has taken me through how to do a proper proper gravity burn I think it all depends on the speed you're traveling at and sort of the weight composition of your rocket the weight distribution things like that so for now uh, at least until I get to 15,000 meters, this is how we're gonna be doing it. So hopefully the rocket doesn't flip over and cause some issues once I get that high. Let's just see. Okay, we're nearly there, 13,000. Okay, ready? I'm gonna start turning right just a little bit. And then by about 30,000 meters, I think I wanna be about 45 degrees. So where that 90 is on my nav ball. I uh, may even get there sooner, I'm not sure, but how do you think I'm doing so far, Omar? And all you other experts out there, if anyone else has got any more tips for Reinstein, feel free to get in touch, I'd love to hear from you, because a lot of you guys are a lot more knowledgeable than I am. Okay, we're nearly there, five, nearly at 30,000 meters, let's start turning it right. Look at that, that's not bad at all, I don't think. I've got good control over my rocket, I've got my atomic motors, we're now at an apoapsis. Take a look at the top here at 65,000, climbing up to 70,000 meters. And we're done with that part of the rocket. Time to activate the next stage. Here we go. And you can see we're still climbing. We've reached about 80,000 meters. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to just start turning right until I get onto this uh, vertical line here. And I think that's a pretty good gravity gravity burn. Gravity burn. I can't even say it properly now. Um, so if you've got any disagreement with me, let me know. If you think I'm doing still doing it wrong, but I think 
I'm quite happy with that so far. And we're actually... Well, look at that. We've still got 9,800 Delta V left. We do need to pick up our speed a little bit now, though. You can see our apoapsis has climbed to about 81,000 meters. I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to cut off my thruster. Then I'm going to go to this screen here. Click on the apoapsis. Drag that round. Create our maneuver. And let me see. 234,000. Actually... I'll just accelerate it like that because we want to get out into the atmosphere or, or out into the solar system, don't we? So, let's fast forward just a slight tad. And we've got a huge burn we need to do now. 2,000 somewhat. This may not work because once this stage is gone, then we're on to the atomic rockets. Oh well, we'll soon find out if this works or not. Hi ho, silver and away! Oh no, I better not do that. <laughs> that nearly squished up my rocket. Yeah, because once we switch over to the atomic engines, the uh, thrust to weight ratio is a lot different compared to using this mainsail liquid engine we've got here. But we'll see how we go. We're nearly out of fuel on this stage, so not long to wait. And there we go, we're out. So now... <laughs> Now we've got this bit still stuck to my rocket. Can you see it? Just on that engine there. Never mind, it should be fine. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so it's just going to take a little while longer, really. But if you look, we've still got a over 8,000 Delta V left. So this is quite a good rocket. I don't know why this is still stuck there, though. That's quite disconcerting. They don't have to make a loud noise as well, these atomic engines. How much uh, electricity have we got? Plenty. Sweet. This is going quite well. So I think, if I'm right in saying so, this is a perfect way of getting out into space. Nearly completed our burn. 250 meters per second left. Then we'll be out into the atmosphere and I'll... Uh... There we go. We're actually there. Okay, I'll rejoin you once I've found a maneuver to get us into contact with Jewel. So here we are guys, here is my maneuver that I'm going to be performing in order to get into the gravitational pull of Joule. You can see I've got an estimated burn of 4 minutes 44 seconds, which is a long time, huge delta V change we need to make. And we're not going to be doing our burn for another hour and 5 minutes, so let's fast forward till we get to the right point. I've decided to record this video mostly in real time, just uh, as a sort of fan service. For, for I have been asking people to suggest what missions they want me to do and Afraid Anna gave me one so I thought well why not show how to do all of these uh, particular objectives that we're trying to achieve like doing the gravity burn doing the um, the burn to get an encounter with the planet and so on and so forth so now we can activate our rockets and we got a huge burn so I'm just going to fast forward the game engine just a little bit and you can see on this stage of our rocket, we've got 1,600 meters per second roughly left. We still need to do about 2,400. So we're going to go on to the next stage of our rocket, which, just as a reminder, is this thin bit in the middle. Now, the thrust-to-weight ratio of that is not too different from the thrust-to-weight ratio of using these four engines. So hopefully our burn should be relatively straightforward. I'm just hoping we're not messing up the uh, maneuver here by fast forwarding the game. Take a, t take a look at the top left. I've got it running at uh, two times. So hopefully, like I say, that's not going to mess it up too much. But sometimes it looks like it does because my node in T is quite different to my estimated burn. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. Let's just change the position of my rocket a little bit. Let's take a little look. Can we see any celestial bodies? Ah, we can see the sun. If I click on my X science thing, again, as I've shown you in a previous episode, it tells you what um, scientific experiments you can actually do with the equipment you've got on board, which is kind of cool. Definitely recommend getting that mod if you haven't already. Uh, but it has been updated to the latest one. I think the one you end up downloading is not the right one but it, it seems to work I think it asks for an update and stuff like that either way it works so don't worry too much about that just grab it while you can and uh, make use of it it's very very helpful and even recently I've been driving around uh, the 
Kerbal, Kerbal base, you know, and uh, getting experiments done from around there, although you don't get very much science from it. It would have been much more useful had I done that earlier on in the um, career mode, but never mind, we live and learn. Okie dokie. We've now finished that stage. Time to activate this one. Look at that. That's a beautiful little rocket. It's so steady. It controls well. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm just going to fast forward even more now. Turn it up to four times speed. And I wonder if this will get us still in contact. We've got 5,300 meters per second delta V left. My eyes are scanning the screen like crazy, making sure everything's going fine we've nearly completed our maneuver so let's slow down the game again and you can see our orbital velocity around the sun is now at 11,500 wow and there we go there is our encounter with Jewel right now to fast forward and uh, I'll rejoin you once we're in an, our encounter because it's two years and 270 days which will take forever see you in a second Alrighty everybody, here we are with our encounter with Yule in about 1 minute and 20. I'm going to set my node in T, there we go, like so. I'm happy with that. Now we just need to turn on our thrusters, fast forward the game a little bit, and we will have our periapsis with Yule. Now, take a little look there. My dual periapsis is 405,000 meters. I've tried to get it quite close without crashing into it. The reason for that height is the atmosphere is present at 200,000 meters, which I didn't know. So I did. I looked it up. Just take a little look on the right-hand side here where it says dual per parameters. And I thought, okay, well, we'll stay outside that because we haven't got any uh, atmospheric uh, instruments with us. So we'll do this as well as we can. Let's just slow down time a little bit. Fast forward in. Oh god, no, 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 I've overshot it. I was pressing the wrong button. <laughs> Not to worry. All we need to do is go around this way on our nav ball and do another little burn. There we go, and that'll take us back out again. Now you can see my dual periapsis. Not exactly what I wanted, but here we go. So to get there to that point is going to take another 132 days. See you in a second. So here we are, folks. We now have a circular orbit around Dual. If just uh, take a look at my periapsis, 253,000 meters. My apoapsis, 1.69 million meters. So now all we have to do is click on our little science X thing. And you can see the scientific data I can gather. So if I just move this, uh, we can get a temperature scan, atmospheric pressure scan, and mystery goo observation, even while we're right here. But what I'm gonna do, I think, is do another maneuver at the periapsis, just to get a little bit closer. And that's mostly using all of my delta V here. 333 second delta, uh, 333 meters per second delta V burn. We've only got 612 left, so the orbit we put this in is pretty much it's just going to stay there. So let's just get to our node in tea time. That's good enough, I think. Six seconds remaining. And take a little look at my rocket. There he is! Oh, wow, look at that green sunset. Nice. Or the green glow, sorry. There we go. We have achieved our orbit. Mission accomplished. Now just to get loads of science, so... As I said, let's go and take a little look. You can't see too much. So, Mystery Goo, let's observe that. That's 21 science, not bad, not bad. Let's beam that back and see how much electricity that uses. Quite a lot, I think. No, not too bad. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is just gather loads of scientific data and try and get round to the sunny side of this. Ooh, this looks nice. Oh, we are on the sunny side. Wow, it's taken a long time to get my uh, electricity back. You can see one of the moons there in the distance. Cool. All right, we've now got full electricity, so I'm going to carry on and get loads of um, scientific data, beam it back, and uh, you'll see me on the next episode. Thank you ever so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoy my cute little mission to Jewel with this tiny little satellite. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.